What's up everyone, the Sly and Sonic fan here, and Lou. I'm going to be helping him review the mess that was the Full Metal Alchemist live action adaptation released in 2017 exclusive to Netflix. However, I feel a background check is required to really understand the impact Full Metal Alchemist had on many lives of anime fans before this movie dropped the ball. Full Metal Alchemist originated as a manga written by the legend herself, Komomu Awakawa, and the manga man, uh, centered around two brothers, Ed and Al, who lives in a world where alchemy is a tool to construct and deconstruct matter to form solid objects. There are also different variants of alchemy, such as flame alchemy. The two brothers lose their mother to an illness, and in order to resurrect her, they decide to do a forbidden process called transmutation, in which they sacrifice something to revive a loved one. The process backfires and the older brother Ed loses his arm, while the younger brother Al loses his entire body, and his soul is made into a suit of armor. Now having nowhere else to go, the two become state alchemists, an alchemist who protects people, to attempt to find some way to restore their bodies. Along the way, new rules and characters are established as dark revelations about the world in which these characters reside and resurface. The manga quickly became a fan favorite, and it wasn't long after when a TV adaptation was given the green light. The anime followed the manga for the first half, but once they ran out of manga to adapt, the second half was entirely new material. People enjoyed the show, but wanted a more faithful adaptation to the source material, so in 2009, six years after the first show aired, a second series going by the name of Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood released and then followed the manga faithfully. Since it had better animation and what many consider to be a better story, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood was not only praised uh, more than the 2003 version, but it was also considered to be one of the best animes of all time. Needless to say, this anime is loved by many people. Now with that said, let's take a look at the movie department. The first Full Metal Alchemist movie was Conqueror of Shambhala, which served as the finale to the 2003 version of the show. While it had its issues, I thought it was alright, and many others did too. The second is The Secret Star of Milos, which is hated across the board, but I haven't seen it yet. Well obviously, since the Full Metal Alchemist series wasn't doing so good in the movie department, they obviously wouldn't want to have another go at it. Right? Well, considering the glamorous reputation live-action anime movies have, then it makes sense for one of the most beloved and iconic series of all time to get the same treatment. What can go wrong? The effects in this movie are so confusing to talk about. Al, the walking suit of armor, looks amazing. There are a few shots that are iffy, but he still looks great. And that's not an actor in a suit. Al is fully digital. That is kind of crazy. Sadly, that's when the effects stopped looking good. Actual instances when alchemy is performed look so much like a fan film. It doesn't look god awful, but you can see right through it. At some point in the movie, there are these zombie like creatures that are introduced that were also featured in the manga and Brotherhood TV series. And no oh boy, does it look absolutely god awful. This is as close to late 90s and early 2000s CGI as you can get. I have an easier time believing Sharkboy and Lava Girl's effects are real than this. And you guys may be saying, leave the movie alone, it obviously has a low budget. And you know what? That might be true. However, I did some digging on the movie's production, and it doesn't look like it had a low budget. See, we were all supposed to be subjected to this movie's awfulness all the way back in 2013, but the budget and technology wasn't sufficient enough, especially for Al's effects. So the movie obviously had some sort of budget if people were confident enough to go through with the project. Not only that, but the director also said a few laughable things. This man said that the technology used in the movie is the same behind the Avengers and will compete against Hollywood. Wait, so you mean this? <laughs> can be compared to this. Um, sure. I haven't seen the anime that this is based on, which I think makes you a good reviewer because going into this I know nothing. Even after watching, I still know nothing and left with more questions than answers. From my understanding, their mom dies, they try to help her, and in doing so, one of them dies, and they don't care about their mom anymore, and he just wants to help his brother. Nothing in this movie makes sense, and it's another example of why Netflix needs to stop making anime movies. Well said, and if you thought we were done talking about how fake this movie looks, we're not. While we looked at this movie's digital effects, we didn't even scratch the surface on how unconvincing this movie looks. Don't believe me? Look no further than the characters. Ed has a hilariously fake rig, and for some reason, they casted someone at medium height. If you're unfamiliar with the show and manga, Ed was only 4 feet tall and was constantly made fun of for being short. In this movie, however, whenever someone calls him short, it makes no sense because he's not short. They must have wrote the script before doing casting. Renry looks alright, but I don't get why she doesn't have blonde hair. Like, how hard could it be to dye the actress's hair blonde? 
Al looks awesome, Mustang looks okay, Hughes is the most accurate looking character there is other than Al. And then we get into the villains. Lust looks alright, Envy looks dumb, and Glut- Oh. Oh god, what do they do to you? While these characters don't look awful, they all look like cosplayers. Every single one of them. It doesn't help that the characters in the anime are European, but for some reason, Asian actors and actresses were casted. Why? Why is every character in every live-action anime adaptation not the right race from the source material? Also, this is just something extra to prove my point. There's this scene where Ed and Al are just sitting in the rain. That should be easy to pull off, right? Two characters sitting in the rain? Well, no. Instead of making artificial rain like most Hollywood movies do or shooting a scene when it's raining, they wet the character's clothing and hair and have digital raid effects going down Al's armor? Why? If this was fan made, it'd be completely fine, but this is an official movie that the director claims can compete against Hollywood. What? Okay, Robotic Kako needs to take over by a sit and stun silence. One major thing this movie struggles with is its acting. In the beginning, when the boys are trying to revive their mom, one of them is just being blown away. I don't see it so bad I can't even remember their names. And the other just says something like, oh no, brother, come back, oh no. And it makes it seem like he has absolutely no emotional attachment to each other, even though he's his freaking brother. When their mom disappears or dies, I honestly have no idea what happens. They just kind of stare off and instead of getting like worked up and crying. A bit further along in the movie, uh, when the brother that isn't a robot is being interrogated by the military, he meets his girlfriend, I think that's what she is, for the first time, and we are shown the worst performance in this movie. She delivers her lines terribly, or maybe that's the English voiceover, but either way, someone screwed up, and her facial expressions are obviously faked. When you watch a really good movie, you forget that it's a movie and feel bad for the characters and beat yourself up inside if they get in a bad situation, even if you aren't there. This never happens in this, and you never forget that it's a Netflix adaptation of an anime. I don't know if you got in the memo by now, but this movie is not really a great adaptation to say the least. This movie tries to fit as much of the manga as it can into this movie while being faithful to the characters and environment in the manga and animes. While the effort is really appreciated, they fail miserably. They try so hard to replicate the show and manga that they forget to add any originality or substance. This movie just fails in every aspect to live up to the show and manga. If the pacing in Endgame is a nice, slow horse ride, this movie is a time machine going at the speed of light. In just a few minutes, their mom dies, they try to resurrect her, and the process of one of their brothers. He becomes a robot, and the other loses his arm and leg, and they replace it with metal, and he gets known as the Full Metal Alchemist. He's trying to find a special stone of some kind to find his brother's body, and I really don't know anything, and from my understanding, they don't care about their mom anymore, just the brother. They also learn the rules of alchemy, and what is allowed. This is all in the first few minutes, and I keep having to pause and go over everything in my head, and I'm still deeply confused. Full Metal Alchemist 2017 fell in almost every category that makes a movie, and while its heart was in the right place, it currently stands as an example of what can go wrong when ad adapting either page or animation to the big screen. I hope you guys enjoyed this review, and I would like to thank Robotic Calcodes for doing this collab with me. Be sure to subscribe to his channel for further well-made analysis.